Alright, welcome back to episode um, 7 of me playing Shadow and Returns. Let's head back to the Steamless Union. Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco's, Paco needs to help her through the door into the Steamless Union. Heads raised in the front room of the bar fall strangely silent, and Paco stands by her side. Now, not speaking, his, his dark eyes flat with furry. Coyote presses a rag on her, on her clawed up face. She winces, but manages to keep in control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look, you can see her, her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone, held together by tendons and burnt skin. It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. Mrs. Kabuda is tending bar herself. Paco walks, walk carries the ma mangled and bleeding coyote into the union. As soon, hey look, my my bot is back. That's great. Anyways, as soon as the boss lady lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, coyote is the color of wet sparkle. And there's something new in her eye. Here, this woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kabuda has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor? I'm sorry, Mrs. Kabuda. I had a run that went bad. So, Ka, I can see that your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It will only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hey, Mrs. Kubuda, my apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Yes, madam. Tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Mrs. Kubuda, I can't afford a cyber arm. I am aware of your financial situation. When you are healed, we will discuss the concept of girl, the debt of honor. Now go bleed somewhere elsewhere. Yes, madam. Yeah, I'm just getting karma from left and right. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her head to you. Domo ha aligato, Lego hood. That girl is precious to me. It is not often that we see acts like these in the barrens. You have performed the great service for my family, for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while you, your work keeps you here. But we both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you this. Ah, uh, renumeration. Please take it as a show of my respect. This looks like a, my kind of place. I'm honored, Mrs. Cooper. Thank you. You are most welcome. I offer more than simple logic. You will find that there is more to the union that meets the eye. Below us is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent operators like yourself. In it, you will find vendors selling the best gear that the black market has to offer, a fully cyber dock, and a secure place to rest. When the drag hits the fan, as they say, this place is a safe house too. You're quite the entrepreneur. Indeed, normally, I require percentages of the runner's income for the use of this facility. But as I said, you are a family now. Consider it on the house to gain entrance. Play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Or I need Johnson's or Fixer's here tonight. In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Grass. He is often stage sight. Van Grass is most often a receiver of all the found articles, but he occasionally has to work. How did he get it? I don't really need it. <sighs> Say this stuff. Anyways, we need to head to the. Um... Oh, Papa's coming along. Okay. Through the room.
Come on, before we head to the room, let's talk to these other faggots. Fangrass. Fangrass is busy talking, honest, calmly, checking his head up display, muttering to a runner standing nearby. All at the same time, he's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Van Grass. Make it quick. It is good. Talk to him. Mrs. Booty told me you're a fixer. Nothing for you tonight. Sorry. I'm doing a little thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey, guy. One more thing. I was just calm like for a moment. Tells his head your way, but you can see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence too. If you got anything you need to unload, come see me. Need to finish this car. Okay. Let's talk with Johnny Clean. Johnny leans on a seemingly brand new mop and surveying the crowd at the union. Hey Johnny, I'm looking for thanks for the tip. The other day, Mrs. Kabuta said I should go to the safe house, but I don't know. I don't quite know where that is. Hey, Johnny, I'm looking for a work coyote. The piano is a little out of tune. Check it up. Talk to this guy. Hey, is that Tristan? Anyways, the Hawking Show Bouncer. Every evening, I see coyotes back. Looking only a little worse for wear. We have you to thank for that. To having her back part, yes. Packer when I tracked her down. Anyways, wonder what she saw in here in, in him. But I guess he ain't all bad. I'm just glad she's back. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon. so soon after what happens to Sam. Immensely toward anyone who walks through that door by a date. Employee or patron, unless they need ill will, of course. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I haven't minded so far. You have to pay extra for our aid. Manicure on hands that big? It's not the size they charge more, or it's the blood under the fingernails. You know where I can find a fence? I think Van Grass is at the bar near the stage. Dwarf with a cyber eye, can't miss him. You hear anything about else about them? Yeah, screw it. Let's head in there, boys. Play chopsticks. I'm gonna play chopsticks. You're unnatural. You should give up shadow wine. Become a touring plant. The analyst, Jillian does not look impressed. You slowly peck the notes out on the keyboard. They spark a faint memory of wonder. You immediately forget, forgotten. This entire piano slides to the left. Revealing a hidden staircase, you descend the stairs into the Union safe house. Oh, they're not gonna show it? Okay. The uh, entrepreneurial Mr. Kubota has combined everything a runner might need into a one stop shopping experience. Black market equipment, high end fuck. Anyways, here you're, you'll most likely be able to find a. Uh, Everything you need. We got this little stash area. Put that here. Uh, Paco. Hey, what's Gucci Paco? No, we don't. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Confirm. Shop the Fair Castle. Shop the farm. David Fry the second. Every inch of this tech all cobs is covered in a chaotic patchwork. Quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things you can you can't identify in the eye of this techno bit storm stands a dwarf. And measurably dressed in supremely charm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you, and I can get any matrix hardware or software that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made it for you. Any questions I can answer or anything here you need? What's an ESP? What do you have for sale? 
So pretty much here you can buy everything what you need. Yeah, I pretty much don't know what, what I'm buying. See you later. I'm fine, Euclid. Well, I'm being rude. Let me also introduce you to our resident Decker and my good friend Johnny Clean. Well, in the same overalls that you saw him in upstairs, down here leaning over a workbench cramped with circuit boards, tables and chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once a, as hot and as invisible as the most famous deckers today. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if I can be. Why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of the system so cleanly that no one knew I was there. Half the matrix runs that urn. My rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility Posing as a janitor, now it's just sort of part of me. Is it true that you were part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade, and he's been smart enough not to tell me. Though he is sure as hell not going to tell you anything about those days. For her health and his, best to let the subject drop. You guys around. Oh my god. Theodore Buster Grubberman is a well-groomed work dressed with a precision that suggests a straight line to military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say, and the uh, neatness this presence is only compromised by the uneven tusk protruding from his mouth. The only other in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm. It's obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious to the room in the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orange voice is soft and thought. When he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc, fire, raise room, factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bugger Buster Grubberman at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also asked Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. How can I help you? You got. You got. Sound here. Better guns, yeah. About to call my old Baron Rower. Yes, I don't really. There's really nothing of interest for me to buy here. Nothing right now. Eric, um, Merce, man. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better. Not that you look bad now or anything, but each one will help to keep you on the right side of the ground. Take a look. Show me what you got, motherfucker. Nothing of interest. This guy has magical stuff. Past the bar, the, en the edges of the safe house becomes somewhat indistinct due to the magical haste surrounding a particular elf. A man seems only half of this realm his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body peddles his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young elf, and welcome to, to this humble home that we call Union. I am 
allergen and half cream. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best in magical fusi, spells and fetishes for the conjuring of the spirits. Let me see what you got. Let's use this one. I like this one. Make it quick, I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Looks like you could use a hand. Then about the night Sam walks died. Sam's dead? Jeez, guy, do you really think this is the time? How did he die? This is going to have to wait. This woman needs surgery now. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to have to go sit in the wait. Watch some trivid or something. This young lady and I have to work. Dude. Uh, I, I want, want some, some badass. Got one on the lingerie side. You'll take what I get if you're leading out. Let's have a look at your face. Please, please, please. Excuse me, Coyote? I earned this face. I'm being stupid. I'm gonna keep it. And sorry. Whatever you say, kid. One swift move, she sings a strange Coyote side. Nighty night. Coyote looks both better and worse than used last longer. All the gaping holes are plunged, and she's sporting a shiny new side of her arm. But now that the adrenaline has worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science combined with Doc's castle's magic and healing powers, I'm almost good as new. Better, really. Ready for some questions now? Look about Sam, yeah? What can I tell you? I can't say I'm surprised he's dead. Tim was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? I dearly like him. I did, he made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. No accounts for the taste. Sam made some bad jokes. Not when he was sober. He was chill and funny, and I guess I knew him the best of everyone here. Sorry he's gone. You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? 
This is pretty average night, regular fellas, I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him? Met him, he's a charmer too. Nice to learn. I like dangers. Anyway, Jake and Sam were, uh, were having a few. Well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing the back, but good. Eventually, he got loud the way he sometimes did when he mixed drinking. And who knows what, and this is who would have once objected. Miss Clive wasn't around. Can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out the back and said, Alley, that's the last time I saw him. He said he got loud. Do you remember what he was saying? Standard Sam Drake. How he grew up rich and didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother. How he loved his mother. It was pretty pathetic stuff. Did Sam have any enemies? Enemies, that's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion, but no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none of them. None that I'm aware of. Where did Sam live? On the streets, mostly. He's occasionally convinced someone to let him flop on their couch, but he's always overstayed his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He's one of the one the night before I saw him last. How bad was his drinking? If it was just the drinking, it would have been bad, but Sam wasn't a monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Boost, chips, drugs. He lived the nitro whenever he could get his hands on them. It wasn't always like this, but once you get got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Sam was sick. Dying. Didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You could just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good, even. He said his mom helped him out. Never said how, though. Thanks, Coyote. I need you to do something for me. What do you need, babe? I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run at, at it when I recover. I will. Alright, now I go upstairs. Before that... Investigate Sam's bunker. The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, find an old photograph that has seen a lot of wear. Look at the image of the photo. Picture is a blonde boy and, and girl, both about age 14, sitting on a dock on the edge of the lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tight around the girl's shoulder, shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making a rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Check the back of the photo. Written in a woman's hand are the words Sam and Jessica. Lake Samarish State Park, summer 2040. Pocket the photo. I wonder if you continue to talk on this lady. In Shadowrunner's circles, the term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any saw bones with a needle and thread. But in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house bo boasts a fully equipped medical suite, complete with schematic procedures. This is Sith world medicine of the highest caliber. The doctor herself, in an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely. Not for the spiritly spirit perked on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle, the spirit's burning eyes following her constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does not look up long enough to no acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. Suppose you're the one who patched her up and pressed work. Thank you. It's a shame she wouldn't let me repair her face, though. 
You know, it's you eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find a full service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be, this is a Shadowrunner bar after a. Uh, for a fervorier of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no better place to set up a practice. I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you with anything? What cyber do you have available? Adds plus one body, adds plus eight HP and plus one quickness. Anyways, um, yeah, let's uh, let's press back. Never mind. All right, um, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna go.